So, Tom, it's more than just kind of uh, establishing the relationship. We understand that Beijing will be pushing for some pretty ambitious targets at these talks too. Uh, that's right. And if the commentary that we've heard from the US and Chinese officials leading up to this is anything to go by, in fact, in just the last few minutes, then it's going to be a pretty contentious meeting. We heard from Yang Jiechi. He, uh, he is the top Communist Party official when it comes to foreign affairs. He is saying, look, the US, they shouldn't criticize us on human rights. The US has many problems when it comes to human rights, including the killing of black Americans. Yang Jiechi is saying that many Americans don't have confidence. You can see pictures of Yang Jiechi there now live. Many Americans don't have confidence in the U.S. But he also said that the U.S. and China have seen lots of progress when it comes to trade. He wants to see more of that. He says there are common global interests for both the U.S. and China. Now, Yang Jiechi's comments coming after some lines from Anthony Blinken, the U.S. Secretary of State, where he said some actions from China threaten the rules-based order. He says they're going to be discussing cyber attacks, Xinjiang and Hong Kong at this meeting, and says that the U.S. is committed to leading with diplomacy. U.S. Secretary of State... Uh, Blinken, by the way, joined by Jake Sullivan, who's the head of the National Security uh, Advisory Council uh, in the US. So uh, in terms of what China is coming to this meeting with, uh, clearly they're going to push back on these complaints from the US around human rights, uh, around cyber attacks, but also they have their own laundry list of requests. They want, for example, the removal of sanctions and tariffs on Chinese individuals and Chinese entities. They want restrictions on U.S. technology flows to China to be reduced. Uh, they also want curbs on Chinese tourists or Chinese uh, journalists and Chinese members of the Communist Party to be removed in terms of visas. And they are pushing, uh, if this is successful, this meeting, for a potentially a setup, a summit between the two presidents on April the 22nd, which is Earth Day. So for the two presidents, Joe Biden and Xi Jinping, to sit down and talk about climate change. That is something the Chinese side are pushing for if this meeting in Anchorage is successful. Tom, actually, we do have that sound from Secretary Blinken really laying out the concerns that the U.S. has about China. Take a listen. We'll also discuss our deep concerns with actions by China, including in Xinjiang, Hong Kong, Taiwan, cyber attacks on the United States, economic coercion toward our allies. Each of these actions threaten the rules-based order that maintains global stability. That's why they're not merely internal matters and why we feel an obligation uh, to raise these issues uh, here today. What I find interesting was the sources were telling us ahead of this meeting that they were sending both Secretary Blinken and advisor Jake Sullivan together to show a united front even within the administration. So, you know, Beijing doesn't do what they did during the Trump era when they were pitting different factions of the administration. At the same time, a different approach, but it seems the rhetoric against China is still the same. Well, certainly it's really relevant to point out the fact that both Jake Sullivan and the U.S. Secretary of State are together and they are trying to show the White House that they are unified in terms of their China strategy because that certainly hasn't been the case over the previous four years under the Trump administration. And certainly, as you rightly say, Beijing tried to leverage some of those divisions within the administration. So the Biden administration trying to show that in this administration they are unified on this. In terms of the rhetoric, that has changed uh, under the Biden administration. They are obviously trying to strengthen their alliances with allies. Uh, they're trying to have a multinational, multilateral approach to China and push back uh, with allies like Japan and South Korea, Australia as well. But in terms of the policy prescription, that hasn't changed significantly. So tariffs have not been removed. We've seen in the last few weeks additional curbs put on Chinese telecom companies. We've seen just in the last few days additional Chinese officials added to Hong Kong sanctions list. So on those measures, nothing has changed significantly or substantially from the Biden administration. The rhetoric has become more rational, many would say, uh, and less volatile. Uh, longer term, of course, from the Chinese perspective, they are very cognizant of the fact that the politics in Washington can change. I've spoken to people here who said, look, President Trump could be back in office in four years' time. So the Chinese side are not prepared to make any radical changes. They're focused on building out their own supply chains and self-sufficiency around technology. And on issues like Xinjiang and Taiwan and the South China Sea, those are territorial issues for China. And for them, these are red-line issues that they won't want to see crossed.